sure to come and take me on a nice little ride. And he done brought some. Not pretty skin if it's like little. Nah. <laughs> See this guy right here, messing up my interview, man. <laughs> when I was in college, I came home Christmas break. He had all my equipment. So, what would you? How would you feel once Ray pushes you to go? No, no, no. Now, some different questions. You can't be the damn Ray. George, no, no, no. Hey, get out of here, man. What do I feel about today? First of all, let me tell everybody I feel hustle. <laughs> I, I, I did not know what I was getting myself into. I told George to come take me on a nice little ride, and he done brought me to some of the best in the world to do this. No, but seriously, man, it's, um, you know, in all, in all levels of life, you know, everybody masters something. And uh, so I'm always a fan of, of someone else's arts, you know, and, and for these guys to do what I've now, I do for fun, I do for recreation. Uh, after I snapped my toe in 2010, it became part of me. And, I, and I, I like cycling, I like riding, I like what it does to the, to the mentality, to the psyche. And uh, I appreciate both uh, guys coming out today, man, and, uh, and just giving me the opportunity to roll with them. And I think it's gonna be a, a real fun time. Um, uh, I kind of figured out that a lot of it is really all mental. It's just making your mind up to, to just never quit never stop so whenever they want to push the pace I'm just gonna hold on for dear life and uh, and hopefully I can survive and make it back here to the spot um, I think it's gonna be a unique experience you know um, he's a former NFL football player he played at the highest level he won many Super Bowls um, he's been the def defensive player of the year so um, it'll be nice to pick his brain to see what his thought process is and how he, he um, channels his energy toward winning versus what I channel my energy towards. I mean, I'm pretty sure our mindsets are probably similar when it comes to the winning attitude and what it takes to overcome and keep pushing through despite anything that's thrown your way. Um, and also, my buddy Rasan Bahati is going to be here. So, you know, we grew up in the sport together, although he's been racing longer than me, but I have learned a lot from him. So it'll be unique for us three to hit the road in the coast and just chat it up and share our experience as athletes. So. I'm just looking forward to the experience, pretty much. Um, I'm just pushing back. I mean, I've been riding longer than him, so, I mean, he's a warrior, but I'm a warrior, too. I probably have more experience than him on the bike, so I'm not too much worried about that. My fitness is really good, so. Through taking a spin class, I went and bought a bike on a whim. I didn't have no exposure, but that's key. I mean, a lot of there's a lot of brothers who can pick up and, and get um, get on the bike and become very good at it, but it's just exposure. It's not common in the inner city, so we just don't know about the sport. And then it costs a lot of money to get into the sport, so money becomes an issue. But if you're talented enough and you perform and people see your potential, um, you'll get some a lot of help in the sport from sponsors and teams. Um, well, I started my first bike. I spent 700 bucks, but that was 10 years ago. So that's a, like a real very, that's a very low level bike. But um, I recommend not buying an expensive bike out the gate because what if you spend three, four, five thousand dollars and you don't even like the sport six months down the line and you invested all that money. So I recommend starting at a, a low decent level bike and then if you like it, then continue to invest in, in the um, sport or your bike. Simple text from, from George just uh, asking if I was around to, to go for a ride. So. Uh, he, I knew that uh, Ray has been around riding bikes lately in the LA area and uh, of course I would love to have that opportunity to ride with him so um, made the time today on my day off to come do a little spin. But I would say that it, it creates a, a certain vibe in the neighborhood. Here we are in Inglewood where a city is known for violence and you have this you know, top athlete that was at the top of his game when he was in the sport of the NFL. Um, to come here and ride a bike, you know, uh, black people don't ride, really ride bikes competitively. So to see him come from where he is to actually uh, 
being a, a bike rider and now wanting to ride with guys like Sharon or myself. Um, I think it's a bit of a, a, a movement and, and, and a stepping stone in the right direction for younger, the younger generation to actually maybe tap into the sport that play football and basketball and baseball. He, he, that's a good example because he's done it, you know what I mean? Well, when I first really learned about cycling, um, it was the Miguel Indurains, uh, Bernard Hinault, Greg LeMond, and then, of course, Lance Armstrong. You start reading about Mario Cipollini. And then I joined a club called Major Motion. I learned a lot about Major Taylor, whom I had no idea who he was and what he had done for the sport of cycling or even American sports. Um, so after I learned about Major Taylor, I was really uh, engulfed in this sport. I wanted to be just like him, you know, even though it was 100 years ago, you know, at the turn of the century. Uh, I was looking forward to being just like him. So uh, that's, that's definitely someone I look up to, even though he's long and gone. His presence is still here. His spirit is still here. There's clubs all across the nation that represent Major Taylor and, and what he stood for. So I'm proud of that. Yeah, Major Taylor, born at Marshall Taylor in uh, Worcester, uh, Massachusetts. Um, was a cyclist, uh, African American, uh, grew up in the South, and you know, at, at that time, the late 1800s, uh, going into the turn of the century, 1900s, he was one of the baddest people to ever touch a bike. And uh, he also, if you ride a road bike and you have those drop bars, he was actually the creator of those bars. A lot of people don't give him that acknowledgement, but he, uh, he created those drop bars and set numerous world records, the mile record, the two mile record. Um, he got to a point where he was so good, they didn't let him compete in the South, so he took his talents over to, to, uh, to Europe. And uh, he was just a great show. People loved watching him, even though he was very uh, discriminated against. Uh, he was a very loyal man, a very honest man, um, a very religious man. Uh, they say he could have made at least two to three million dollars if he raced on Sundays. Uh, he refused to race on Sundays because he was a church going man. So um, he was a great man who, who really set the tone for American sports. And actually, he was the first American to be a world champion at any sport. So um, it's just, he has a lot of accomplishments. You know, to think about making uh, 800, 900, 100, I mean, a, a million dollars back then is just incredible. And unfortunately, he died with, without a penny in his name, but he really. Um, set of precedents for us to, to live up to and, and, you know, something to strive for. And that was to be uh, just the best you can be.